Hi, I'm Pamela Bhattacharya, and I'll talk to you about our project Calendar.Help, a virtual scheduling assistant that started at Microsoft Fuse Labs and was transferred, tech transferred to the Outlook team. Research shows that on average, an information worker spends about five hours every week scheduling meetings. And when a survey went out to you know thousands of information workers asking what are the tasks they want to delegate uh, if they could to an assistant. <coughs> Excuse me. The number one task that people said they were interested uh, to have an assistant for that you know they can offload the task was scheduling meetings. So why why do people want to offload the task of uh, scheduling meetings to assistants? Uh, you don't want to do the back and forth. You don't want to pe remind people to respond. Uh, you can you might need to reschedule a meeting, cancel a meeting. There can be updates. You can add people, remove people, so on and so forth. And it can get very complicated. Rather, what you want is you want to spend your time on things that matter. Uh, focus on things that uh, needs your attention rather than you know going all this back and forth with different people. And executives mostly have EAs to help them with this task. What we want to do is uh, make this available for anybody. So what essentially happens in a scenario where uh, somebody has an admin that takes care of their scheduling, uh, they'll have an email thread going on. And at some point, <coughs> excuse me, when they want to schedule a meeting, they'll just CC their admin saying that, hey, uh, can you find a time that works for us? Now what the admin does, uh, the admin will look up the calendar of the organizer and uh, email back the invitee uh, in this case, Cat, saying that, hey, uh, Rebecca is available these times, does any of this work for you? And then Cat will respond back, and uh, she might say, yes, that works, no, that doesn't work, here is another alternate time that I am available, and all this back and forth goes on until you know there is a consensus, and then the admin sends out uh, the ICS or uh, the meeting uh, invite to both, of, both the organizer and the invite. This becomes really complicated when the number of attendees increases. Uh, you have to uh, go back and forth with each one of them to get consensus. Uh, in case of rescheduling, you have to start over again. Uh, you might need to cancel the meeting. Uh, we also, you also need to support resource booking, especially in enterprise scenarios like conference room booking. Yeah, that's really great. Human assistant can support personalization, which is you know for different meeting types. What are the times that you prefer? So, for example, is your lunch time between 11 to noon or noon to one? You know, for every people uh, it differs. So you you know your human assistant learns over time what are your preferences for different meeting types. Uh, reaching a time consensus, uh, so the assistant has to make sure that you know they go back and forth with all the invitees, they remind them to respond and get to a meeting time as soon as possible. And last but not the least, uh, the admin, a human admin is able to provide uh, personalization to this rec times they recommend. So uh, you know the organizer might have a lot of free space on their calendar, but uh, a human assistant won't just pick any random slot. They would know, OK, mornings are uh, times when the organizer wants to focus and get work done. So they only prefer meetings in the afternoons. When they meet with, say, a, uh, a different time zone, they prefer early mornings over evenings, so on and so forth. So all these you know, different aspects of scheduling that a human assistant brings on board, how can we uh, have a digital assistant does, does the same thing? So we built calendar.help, which is a, a scheduling assistant that helps you do that in an email conversation. So say if you are having an email conversation with a, a colleague or a friend and you need to meet, you essentially CC uh, the bot and uh, the bot takes it for, over from there. In order to solve this problem, we have three key research uh, challenges uh, that uh, we have worked uh, on and we are continuing to work on. 
The first one is uh, the natural language processing and understanding uh, to detect scheduling information from these email threads. Right? There are not only the first email thread where you CC your admin and say, hey, take care of this meeting, but all the eventual back and forth from the invitees, you know, the times that uh, were first on the calendar doesn't work anymore, so on and so forth. So that's, that's really the number one. And what, what kind of things do you expect to say to this bot, you know, Kotana, that can understand? You can say simple things like, you know, schedule a call next week or find an hour and book a room. Or you can say very complicated things like next week except Monday uh, or one of the invitees is optional or book a room. Uh, with a you know scoped conference room query as we call it in building 32 so you have to so that assistant has to disambiguate what does building 32 mean uh, so on and so forth and then understanding intent as I was uh, you know mentioning earlier you can have emails back and forth and for each of them you need to understand the intent what is the person that you're receiving the email from uh, asking for and what actions do you need to take once you have an email, you also need to extract the relevant entities, right, with co that are relevant to the context of scheduling the meeting. So if I say, it was great seeing you in New York last month, uh, let's meet up in Seattle uh, next week. Uh, New York is not relevant anymore. Ne uh, what is relevant is Seattle because that's where we want to have the meeting and that's where we want the assistant to schedule the meeting for. The, Third and the most important part of this is contextual understanding. So it, there could be multi-ton conversations with the assistant. So you need to, the assistant needs to remember uh, the conversation that has happened. You know, references to things that are in a different email thread but related to the same meeting. How do you disambiguate those? The second part, the second research challenge is uh, personaliz personalization or scheduling intelligence as I talked earlier. Uh, how do you find the right times for the right meeting? How do you prioritize meeting? How do you uh, understand which meetings can be rescheduled, which cannot be, uh, which <coughs> meetings might need to be cancelled, so on and so forth. And the last part, <coughs> excuse me, the last part is the human computer interaction. How do you build the trust with your assistant? You know, how, how can you uh, make sure that you delegate your uh, meeting and then uh, uh, you can be rest assured it will be in your calendar in due time. And in order to build this trust and build this expectation, uh, we introduce this cons this framework that we are starting to experiment with, which is automation levels of a digital assistant. So synonymous to self-driving car automation levels, uh, we are introducing a concept of digital assistant levels. So level zero is something manual, where the organizer is in complete control of their calendar, which is you know, a very common scenario today. Uh, level one is you know, smart on-demand assistant, so you just uh, you know, ask for things that are synchronous, uh, non-ambiguous, you know, very simple to understand. The level two is the delegated support, and that's where we think we are today, uh, where you can delegate, it's an ambiguous, asynchronous operation, and you expect the assistant to do whatever it takes to for uh, that task. Level three is hands-off assistant, so the uh, assistant is more uh, proactive in going, you don't have to explicitly ask for tasks or uh, scheduling meetings or rescheduling, so on and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. Level four is personalized optimization. So imagine uh, uh, executives who have admins uh, that takes care of their calendar. You know, making sure they are saving most of their time. They are prioritizing meetings. They can move around meetings, so on and so forth. And lastly, how can you achieve the same thing at the organizational level? So, uh, you know, imagine, you, you know, if the calendar, uh, there is this assistant that takes care of all calendars that are in an organization and helping everybody save time, uh, find more focused time, so on and so forth. So, as we said, you know, we feel like we are at a level two uh, where we are giving more delegated support. and. With new features, we want to see where in the levels we fall. You know, uh, some level. Uh, one thing to keep in mind that these levels are uh, not linear. Uh, as you go from one level to another, uh, it's really hard uh, to uh, get things going. So, with that, let me show you a real demo of how this works.
So here I am having an email thread where I email someone saying that, hey, I'm done with the analysis, uh, please take a look. And they reply back saying, great, uh, do you want to meet and chat? So I say, sure, uh, let me ask my assistant to find some time for us. And I go ahead and now CC uh, this assistant, which is really an email address, kotana at calendar.help. And what I do is I give specific instruction. I say, Kotana, please schedule an online meeting for 45 minutes sometime next week. And I mentioned that the invitee is in a different time zone. So I am in PST. I mentioned that the invitee is in EST. Let's see what happens next. So I get back an email from uh, the assistant immediately saying that, hey, I'm working on scheduling your meeting. Uh, keep an eye out. I'll send you information as things progress. I'll keep, keep an eye out as things progress. And once, once uh, Kotana or the assistant is able to get this information, they process it. And now they send me back an email saying that, hey, uh, this is no need to reply. I'm just letting you know that these are the times I proposed for the meeting. Right? And uh, now these are the times that were uh, sent to the invitee. And once the invitee responds to that, uh, the assistant will again process that response. So in this case, the next email I find from Cordana is saying that, hey, uh, I proposed two new times to the invitee. And I'm wondering, why did Cortana do that? So at that point, I can go to the meeting details page. So in this case, this is my meeting details page. So uh, I see that I had sent, so you can see all the messages uh, relevant to that meeting. Uh, you can see that Kotana had pro first proposed this time uh, to the invitee. And the invitee replied saying that, hey, uh, they are not available at that time and proposed an alternate time range. And in this case, they said the week after. This is where the contextual reference part I was mentioning about earlier. So the week after of what? So in order to understand that, we need to, in order to understand that, we need to know that the original meeting time was next week. So once it has uh, this new uh, proposal from the invitee, uh, Kotana is able to understand that uh, and propose new times uh, for the week after. And then uh, when the invitee replies saying that, hey, all of those times work for me, uh, Kotana just goes and sends ahead uh, the ICS or the meeting object to uh, both the organizer and the attendee. And then for any subsequent changes to the meeting, you can just reply again uh, with Kotana CC and saying that, hey, I want to reschedule my meeting, and you can give specific preferences, or you can just leave it ambiguous, and uh, Kotana will find a time for you uh, to reschedule the meeting. You can also say, cancel the meeting. I don't need the meeting anymore. Or you know, add this invitee, remove this invitee, mark this invitee as optional. Anything that you would do with a human assistant, essentially, you can just do by uh, ceasing Kotana at calendar.help and mentioning your preferences in natural language in email.